Hi guys, uh, good morning. Happy to be here for the third time. Uh, you probably already know me, so I will not spend uh, too much time about talking about myself. Uh, my name is Sandu Pereira. I'm a B-Stall consultant at Nebscope, awesome company in Portugal. And I'm, I'm a Microsoft Integration MVP since 2011. Last year I spoke about, I was writing a book about P-Stop mapping. It's already available since last six months, I think. Um, 12 patterns, almost 400 pages about pistol uh, mappings, and it's free. So enjoy. I hope you like it. So, uh, today's sessions about BSTalk server, cloud on premise, I decided to create a light wave session, uh, trying to be a little fun session, but also with useful uh, content. So I decided to create this uh, BSTalk server tips and tricks for admins and for developers. So just play around with a few tricks that are useful and happen daily uh, in our project. So, but what do I mean about BSTOK administration tips? It's for this type of people that are always trying to difficult the developer lifestyle, okay? So, let's start with trying to annoy Tord. So, you all remember Tordles from last year's sessions, always trying to remember developers not to write on the event viewer, especially on the application. I have to agree with Tord. I'm a developer and an admin. So I don't care if the developer writes or not his error or information in the, in the event, event log. But please don't write in the application log. Because application log is where BSTalk writes all the errors, IAS and BAM, other stuff, always write content in the application log in the event viewer. So you don't want to mess that up by writing message arrive or not. Okay. What normally the bell, uh, admins does is uh, they try to change the mind of the developers, change the code. So this is a fight that they will not win because developers will try to find a thousand excuses to say that this information are important. They need that information. They need to know when the message arrives, message transform, and message send. So don't try to change that. Take control of your environment and fix that for the developers. So I will switch for a quick demo because I, I love this, this scenario. I have this folder, just uh, the resolution is a little bad, but okay. Just copy all the files and past. I think they're already processed, yeah. So this is what normally happens. So we we'll go to application and see, hey Tord, message arrived, is being received, just an update, is being transformed, <laughs> and actually it's finished, no? So what you can do as an admin, you just use PowerShell really powerful tool. So it's just a quick overview. So I decided to create a log name saying, uh, a custom log saying stupid developers. So I take the annoying Tor source and I just clean that and move to a different uh, application log. So let's run. Yes, I want to restart the service because I'm creating a, a, an a custom application log. I'm moving the source from the application to the new one. And then I need to restart the event log service. 
So it probably take a little seconds. Let me check. It's still restarting. Okay, that's good. So if you now do the same thing, just control B. I think I copy all. Uh, wait. Control. My machine is very fast, so. Okay, now I go to the event viewer, and if I, F5, I no longer have an orient tort. So if I go into the stup stupid developers, there. <laughs> I fix that. I don't need the developers to fix the code. I solve my problem in, pr in production, okay? So, let's go back to the presentation. Second, have you ever think about what these features are in common? RosettaNet, how many of you have worked with RosettaNet before? Hi, ah, yes, nice. A few of them, but I'm not the only one. So, RosettaNet, ESP, UDI, what they have in common? Okay, there are, all of them are optional features, and all of them have a custom database create for supporting that features. But do you think that these back database are being backup by default with the jobs that exist in the in BStock server? No, they don't. So this database, you install everything, these databases are not being backup by default. You need to run, actually Microsoft create two SQL scripts that you need to run, again, that database, and also they, you need to make a reference and the admin or the back, backup database to the name of these tables so that the BStock uh, backup job will backup this database for you. Otherwise, these backup databases are n never being backup or clean up, okay? Just keep that in mind. Mark log tables, okay? Every single database except the uh, BAM star schema have a table called Mac, Mac log database, table, sorry. So each 15 minutes, each, uh, every time a transaction log is made on that tables, saying this log were back up at this hour in this day. So it's a, a string. This table only have a string. But they are keeping growing, 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 growing. Each time, every 15 minutes, this table is growing a little. And there is no job by default that clean these tables. Solution by Microsoft, you use the Terminate tool. This means you need to stop your environment to do what? To purge all the, all the information inside these tables, okay? Fortunately for us, I decided to create a, a SQL script. Actually, it's a, 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 the same delete backup history that you use in BStalk and extend these, um, these functionalities to go to that tables and delete according to the days to keep in the backup uh, information to respect that day. So you no longer have to purge all the, all the information. You no longer have to stop your environment. You, they are being clean uh, each time the, the job runs, okay? Also credits to Michael Sand, Thor, uh, Thor Gladnardal, and my co-workers, Real Man and Pedro Sosa, that helped me improve the script, okay? Hey, you, oh, sorry, you'll find uh, we will have access to the, to the slides. You'll find always a, a link to the source of the scripts and the source code of from solutions. SAP adapter. It really supports 34 bits or not. I see all this crazy information on, on the internet saying SAP adapter only support 32 bits. You need to install 
the SDK copy and paste uh, the DLL from one folder to the other. What does really mean, okay? So yes, these SAP adapters support 34 bits, okay? Always. You need to, but you need always to have the 32 bits and the 34 bits. Uh, you can, the problem is you need to have a, 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 a mark, uh, SAP market account to access uh, the marketplace from SAP to download these SDKs. You always need to download the RF, RFC SDK Unicode because you have SAP Unicode or no Unicode. You always need to install the Unicode version. By download, and you need to download these two name files from the SAP marketplace. This is 32 bits SDK and 34 bits SDK. With these two bits, you download, copy, you have the instruction there, you can follow the link on my blog, and you actually have SAP adapter running 34 bits, okay? So, tracking data. You all, all of you know that developers don't care about that. Developer environment, tracking full. It's easier for us to uh, check what everything is do, what, what is happening in our environment. Uh, is there any error, debugging, and so on. So, it's except for us to have the full tracking in our, in our environment. But we don't care about the MSE that is going to production. It's, it's not my problem, it's the admin problem. So I never clean, I, I actually do that myself. I am the developer and the admin, I, never, I always forget to clean these this, this settings. So again, developers try to reach, the, the admins try to reach the developers to fix that, not doing that, blah, 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 blah. No. It's a fight that, again, you cannot win. You will never win that fight. So again, you don't need the developer for nothing. PowerShell script, again, powerful tool, is one of the amazing tools for admins. You just write your PowerShell script. Just clean all tracking. Disable all tracking if you want. Or if you don't want to disable all tracking, because you need, as an admin, you need to check some information. For example, if you have BISOL 366 and you have to have some tracking set for, for using the, at least the visual tools. So, create the PowerShell script. You, can, you, you spend one day or one afternoon creating these scripts and you just run, each time one application is deployed, just run that PowerShell script. They will clean that for you instantly. You have this access to this script that is in the bottom. This is clean all the full tracking from your every application that you have in your environment. So you just play that script, change a little, and optimize your, necessary, uh, your, your needs, okay? So five tips to admins that I hope you find interest. Let's go to the developer staff. It's for like this kind of people that sink in the batching mode and in recovery uh, interchange mode also. So again, the batching. No, I see this a lot, lot, lot of times happening. So I have, I have. Um, I have a process that I need to debatch my message. What I need to do? I need to create an envelope schema. I need to create a schema. And then I normally create a custom pipeline to set the, the, in, the, in, the envelope and the schema to extract the message and put the, the debatching. Normally it's an XML receiving pipeline with some settings inside. So, do I really need to do this all over again for each debatching do, do, that I have? You actually don't need that. So by creating the envelope and setting the X-body uh, path um, property inside the envelope, 
to specify what, which schema node you want to debatch, you only need to use the, actually you only need to use the XML HC pipeline by default. By using that pipeline, automatically you get debatching. So you don't need to create a custom pipeline for that, okay? Probably if you need to create the validation, okay, yes, you need to create a custom pipeline. With the debatching, XML disassemble and the validation. Because the first one will validate the envelope and the second needs to validate the message itself. So in that case, you need to create a custom pipeline. But you don't need to create a custom pipeline for each. You can create a generic pipeline, okay? I will show this later in the demo. I, I, I'm combining three tips. Again, validate message. Normally, what you do? Again, the same steps. Create a custom pipeline for each schema that we want to validate, or at least for each project. You don't need that, okay? Custom flat files. Flat files is really strange, because you always need to specify a schema. So I, I end up, one month ago, I went to a project that you were, they have almost 100 flat files, 100 pipelines. Now that's insane. It's a, DLL is huge. I just reduce all of this stuff using 100 uh, flat file schemas and only one pipeline. So, yes, you need to specify a schema inside the pipeline disassemble component, but you can create a custom generic pipeline and in real, uh, in runtime, change the properties. So I only have one pipeline, I just configure the pipeline for each file, flat file that I want in each receipt location. Okay? So yeah, you don't need that for nothing. Tip eight, content-based routing. I like content-based routing, but sometimes content-based routing and re request response can be difficult to understand. So I know that I have a receipt, pipeline, a receipt port and I can create a filter to the send port but you don't have nothing to correlate to response. Yeah, it can be a little difficult. If you have a request response receiving port and you make a filter to a request response send port, this filter will be automatically for you. So you can create custom-based routing with lob operations like SQL or subsystem. You don't need an orchestration to do that for you because most of the time I see receive a message orchestration just to map the message, communicate to SAP, and receive back the response. You don't need that for nothing. Just, if you don't need the, the orchestration, just avoid using orchestration, okay? The problem here with lob operations is that you have the binding uh, properties inside the send, and you need to specify an operation. This operation needs to be promoted. So if you are uh, implementing content-based routing, you at some point need to promote this operation. And you can do that by just creating a custom component, pipeline component, just to promote the operation f that you want to, 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 to do, okay? Because for example, in my sample I have three operations, select, insert, uh, and delete, I'm only using one port. I don't want to create three different ports just to avoid these type of things. Okay. So, I have this debatching receive location. I have several ports. Uh, as you can see, in this case, this is what we normally see. We have a custom pipeline, uh, pipeline that you specify what is my envelope, what is my person. You cannot change. This is made all configuration made by Bezel Suit that is deployed. So you have this nice description there, and I'm validating also the person. If I just run that. I think I need to 
go to the patching out just let me clean that and oh boy uh, in towards the patching okay I have a key some errors there so this is the custom pipeline so I see I have four messages I have some errors inside I get three messages okay so but what what you can do if if you can see it's like I have an XML file so in this case is the standard XML so I don't do nothing I'm using the same schemas and passing to the to, uh, same operations so if I'm going there and pass the same the receiving oh, let me put oh, this resolution is killing me. So again, you know, I did the debatching. This time, I didn't check for validation, so I get four messages. So I don't need a custom pipeline to do that for me. Okay. Again, I have several options. I create. Uh, I can create a validation uh, schema. Just if want to validate the message. So I just can uh, specify dynamically here. So if I want to use the generical stuff, like for example, the SML receiving, just to validate if the message is correct, I need to use this, this specification. So the name of the schema and uh, slash, I don't know how to say in English, and the DLL versioning. I just copy this structure and put in the configurations in the, in the pipeline, and again, I'm dynamically configure everything on the, on the, on the Bistock admin. I don't need to create other, other um, pipeline components, so I can reuse my pipelines. I have another scenario where I have, let me check my time, I'm okay. Okay, uh, I have other scenarios where, sorry, a little bit lost. So flat file. Flat file. Then I have a custom uh, pipeline component, generic pipeline component. So the trick here, let me open Visual Studio. Okay. I create my generic pipeline uh, flat file. But because the flat file disassemble forced me to give uh, a schema always, I just use a generic one that you have in, uh, in BizTalk already. That is uh, Xlang base type any. So, after that, I can use whatever I want. I can deploy this pipeline and it works. So again, I have the normal stuff where I specify what are the file that I want to, to, uh, to translate for a flat file to XML. But I also have this generic pipeline where I dynamically are setting this operation. So, see? Then I can use all of when, whenever I want. So for the content-based routing, again, I need to promote the operation. So what I did was just create a simple, very simple uh, pipeline component. Sorry, the resolution. But I'm, well, you probably don't see too much, so let me. Copy this. What I'm doing is, I'm just reading the message type. I will try to find the last, uh, I am bad in names of in English, so the cardinal, I think. 
plus one. So because I know that the law of operation will have the insert, the delete, and the select in the last uh, place in the, the message type. So I then promote this name to the operation. That's it. Nothing too, too heavy. I just read a string and promote another string. So very, very light, this operation. So I now have this, like, delete operation, add operation, and select operation ready place that is going to connect to my SQL without using any kind of orchestration. So this, this, this application don't have any orchestration. I only use a receive location because I, sp I expose my schema as a, a, WC a WCF, like a canonical schema. And I just set, create a send port uh, with a, a filter, of course. Oh, okay. It's reading what you are thinking about. Okay, with a filter and uh, with the content based route promote operation. And of course, I need to specify these operations inside. So the operation insert to the person insert operation in SQL. So I know that I already have, let's just let me delete this person. Okay, delete complete. I need, okay, wait. Put a little small so I can fit in my window. Okay. Add, invoke, already complete, select. So I got the response, so everything is working without uh, orchestrations. I don't need orchestration for do that. So you know, I love uh, mappings, so I love to use functoids also. Uh, what about creating a custom functoid? So when you create a custom functoid, not normally, what we do is to install this DLL, because this is a C Sharp uh, project. We need to install this DLL under the mapper, developer tools mapper extension, because I need this DLL to be consumed by the Visual Studio to promote the, 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 the functoid shapes to the Visual Studio toolbox. And normally, I install this DLL in the GAC just I can run uh, in my system, okay? Uh, in the engine, BSOC engine. And what we normally do is this type of code using the set external function name. And for example, this is a compare operation. And in my body, I will set the, the set function, external function name, and I need to create a function with the code. But actually, there are two ways of doing custom functoids. In this case, we are saying that this functoid will use an external assemble. And in this case, you need to install this DLL on GAC, okay? But have you ever seen the standard string functoids available in BSOC? There are non-DLL installed in their environments. Why? Because when you run that, uh, when you test the map, the code of these functoids are being wrapped up inside the XSLT file, okay? And this type of functo functoids do doesn't need to be deployed on GAC. Actually, BSOC allow you to do that. So instead of using the set external function name, you can use <laughs> set script buffer. And with the same code, in a different way, we are doing the same operation. The difference is that if I use that one, I need to install in GAC in all my environments, okay? In this one, I only need to put this DLL inside the BSTOC mapper uh, extensions under the BSTOC path, installation path, just because BSTOC Studio needs it. I don't need to put nothing in production, nothing. This will be wrapped up inside your 
XSLT, XSLT file and can be used anywhere. I have more. I can continue. So where is Sarvana? No? Okay, thanks. My, this is my contacts. Uh, do you have any questions? No? Just be aware that I have a director's cut inside my, my, my presentation that you can see before, uh, after the event. And we have some more tips like database look, look, look up from Toid, Rosetta Net gotchas. So, and many, many problems that you can find here is some solutions. Uh, use PowerShell script to monitor your environment if you don't have a decent tool like BSOL 360 or other, other tool. Then, then you can do powerful things in your environment using PowerShell, okay? Just monitor uh, suspended instance, Windows update, disk space. I have a lot of problems with disk space in one of my clients. I received the warning message when I have five megabytes available. I cannot do nothing with the five megabytes. So this is powerful stuff that you can do easily. And of course, full back, the backup only happens one time. Uh, be aware that if you want to force a full backup, you need to do extra stuff there. Uh, validate Rosetta Net message is insane. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> You cannot validate a message inside the transformation uh, design tool. It fails every time. <coughs> Believe me. Just because you need to export, import XML file to the pip, the pip is the Rosetta Net message, you need to import one X XML file that put a namespace inside the mapping. And it failed because of that namespace. So you need to uncheck the validate output just copy the message, delete that namespace, and validate this message against the schema. Then you are fine. You can validate that one. So I hope you enjoy. It was a pleasure to be here again. And thanks once again.